And now I'm going to share the screen. Okay. So I'm in our uh, Tuesday, November 17th and today lecture, which is on shear and bending moment diagrams. And we're going to go over the overview in a little bit, but I wanted to point out some, um, uh, some things that are posted. One is the shear and bending moment diagram template. And let me just pull it up. I have it opened already. And can everybody see it? Right? So this is what we went over yesterday. The first horizontal line represents the beam and we put the, all the loading on the beam. And then we draw vertical lines down so that we have our shear diagram drawn right be behind, uh, below the loading diagram. And we put V and we put the units and we put a zero and plus and minus. And then on the right side, we put in the scale depending on how large the shear is gonna be. And then we continue those vertical lines down to and draw a horizontal line for the moment. And we put our units and we write zero plus or minus. And then we put a scale here based on our moments. Then um, going back to the module, I also posted the problem that we did on Tuesday. So let's just take a quick look at that. And it's right here. And I'm gonna move our pictures over and uh, make this full screen. So the problem we worked on on Tuesday was chapter seven, number 38. And this was our loading diagram. At A, we had 120 pound force going down. At D, we had a 300 pound force going down. And at F, which you can't see, at F, there's a load here of 120 pounds as well. And so what we did is we looked at these external loads and we calculated the reactions at the support. At C, there was a pin. And at E, there was a roller. So I we first did the sum of the moments about point E to cancel this out. And we found CY is equal to 240 pounds. We did some of the forces in the X, which resulted in CX being equal to zero. And then we did some of the forces in the Y and we found EY to be 300. And then we did some of the moments about another point just to check to make sure we get the 240 and the 300 and we did. Okay, so that we already know how to do anyway. So now we have our template. We draw a, hard, a vertical line down every, every time where there's a section where there's some change happening. And there's the 240 pounds here, there's the 300 pounds here, there's the 300 pounds here. And then at the end, there was 120 going down. And the shear diagram followed the loading exactly. So at point A, there was 120 pounds going down. So I went down to 120. Then between A and C, nothing happened. So there was no change. I stayed at 120. At C, there was a 240 going up. So I drew my shear diagram going up 240, which brought me to a positive 120. And then from C to D, nothing was going on. So it continued at 120. At D, it went down 300. I drew a line down 300, which resulted in a negative 180. And then from D to E, nothing happens. Continue over on the 180. At E, the 300 brings me up to 120. Nothing happens here. And then at the end, we have a 120 force going down. And that's really your check because a shear diagram always starts and ends at zero. If it was up to 180 here and you had a force of 120 going down, you would know there's some mathematical error. And then looking at the shear diagram, we realize that the maximum absolute shear that this beam is gonna experience due to this loading is 180 pounds. Whether it's negative or positive, it doesn't matter. It's going to experience 180 pound force. So we have to make sure that we select a beam that could handle that kind of load for in shear. Then we learn from distributed loads that the moment is really the integral of the force, right? And that's really the area and V, the shear is a force. So what we did is, oh, and we colored in this, that we shaded the region, shaded the regions. And then I called them regions one, two, three, and four. And I put a negative when the area was negative and a positive when the negative was, when the area was positive. And then we calculated the areas for those four sections. And then in order to do the moment diagram, I start at zero. The area was 
1,200 and it's a negative area. So the slope is negative. The second area was 3,000 and it was a positive area. So I go up 3,000. This area was a negative 3,600. So I have a negative slope going down 3,600, which brings me to 180. And then the last area was 180 and it was a positive area. So it comes up and sure enough, it does close at zero, which is another check. And then we shade in the region. And the maximum moment we saw is actually, we saw a positive and a negative of 1800. So we have to make sure that we're designing this beam to handle 1800. Joanne, I have a question. Yeah, Angel. So those areas, that is coming from the shear for that we came up with beforehand. And the second valley, is that the distance from point, um, or is that just the distance of the section? Gotcha. Okay, let me answer it a little bit fuller. When mm -hmm. you're trying to produce the shear diagram, you're only looking at the loading diagram. Everybody mm -hmm. good at that? In order to produce the shear diagram, you look at the loading diagram. Once you want to produce the moment diagram, you're only looking at the shear diagram, mm -hmm. right? So we're looking at the area of the shear and the you know a area of a rectangle is base times height, right? Mm -hmm. And the base, is 10 inches. So if you want, you could put the distances down here so you don't have to look back up. But the height is 120 and the base is 10. So it's 120 times 10, 120 times 25, 180 times 20, and 120 times 15. Does that answer your question, Angel? Yeah, I definitely got it now. Thank you, Julie. Okay, great. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, stop sharing this now, but notice, as the force goes down, shear goes down. Force goes up, shear goes up. When the area in shear is negative, the slope goes down. When the area is positive, the slope goes up, okay? And you could think of this as you did in calculus doing integration. You could also think of this, these curves are actually similar to those curves you did in physics, in physics 11 and 4A, where you were looking at the distance, and then you did the velocity and the acceleration. Okay. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing this. And what I want to do now is share a different screen. And hang on a second. Okay, so the template we looked at, that base, you saw, we saw the template, and then this is Tuesday's class problem. And now what I wanna open up is this. This is shear and bending moment diagram summary of diagram shapes. So I'm gonna open up that. Uh, that was not it. Yeah, okay, now let me move my pictures again. And I'm gonna go down, everybody take a look at the screen for a minute. This first page is a summary of all, but I separated it also. So we notice then when the load goes up and then the load comes down, our shear diagram goes up and then comes down. When our load goes down and then comes up, the shear goes down and then comes up, okay? We haven't looked at distributed loads yet, but let's just take a look at this. A distributed load on a beam going down, it's a negative. So it's gonna give you a negative slope. Does that make sense? So if we have point loads, if it, the forces are positive, the shear diagram shows a positive. Forces is negative, the shear diagram shows a negative. It's the same with distributed loads. Distributed loads, if the load is going down, it's a negative, it's gonna show a negative slope. Let's take a look at the moment diagram. Everybody with me? When the area of the shear diagram was positive, our moment diagram was positive. 
when the area was negative on the shear diagram, our moment was negative. If our shear diagram has a negative slope, but a positive area, the shape is parabolic, but it goes up. If you have a negative slope and a negative area, it's still parabolic, but it's going down. I separated these into two different pages, but I think the first page is the best. So let's take a look at this. If you have a load diagram where the force goes up and then comes down, the shear diagram goes up and comes down and results in a positive area and the moment results in a positive slope. If we have a force go down and then the force go up, the shear diagram re um, results in a, ne uh, a negative force and then a positive force and it gives us a negative area and the slope is negative. And really what I'm doing is I'm taking the integral of the load to produce this, and then the integral of the shear to produce the, mo the moment. Let's look at these two distributed loads. They are exactly the same. Number three and number four, the distributed loads are going down, which means the slope has to go down. But if the slope goes down with a positive area in the shear, the parabola is going up. If we have the slope going down, but the area is negative, we have a parabolic going down. Let me say that again. Distributed loads going down on a beam result in a negative slope, definitely. But when you draw it on the shear diagram, if part of the slope is positive, the area, sorry, if the area is positive, you're gonna have an, a positive a, a parabola parabolic curve. If you have a negative area, it's gonna result in a negatively going down parabolic curve. And we're gonna see it now, but this is the cheat sheet that I use, okay? Because I don't like to do integration. So if you don't like to do integration, you can have these cheat sheets. If you rather do it by the math, then do it by the math. Let me just show you two more examples. There are times we have triangular distributed loads. So if we have a triangular distributed load, a triangular distributed load is gonna result in a parabolic shape because this equation has an X in it, so it's gonna be X squared. This one, we could also have a distributed load that's triangular, but instead of having a negative slope, it has a positive. Negative slope results in a para, the parabolic parabolic shape going down. A positive slope results in the parabolic shape going down, but it's different. One's concave up and one's concave down. And then these are second order. So if you take the integral, you're gonna get third order. So I just keep this sheet open for me every time I do a shear and bending moment diagram. Okay, and now we're gonna do a diagram. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing. I am now going to turn me to make be the host on the phone. I am going to Hang on. Oh, this is the host now. So now I wanna make sure that I am recording still. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put it on pause it again. So now it's recording from my phone. Hopefully everything turns out good. Last week's turned, uh, Tuesday's turned out fine. Okay, so we're doing number 42 now. So let's take a look at 42. Okay, I'm gonna draw it. 42 is on page 388. 
Everybody can see what I'm drawing? Yeah. So this is point A, this is point C, this is point B, this is six feet, this is four feet. On A to C, I have a distributed load that is 2.5 kips per foot. And at C, I have 12 kips going down. And then at A, I have a pin. So A is going to have an AY and an AX. And BY, B is a roller, so I have a BY. Um, the first equation I'm going to do is sum of the forces in the X equal AX equals zero. So I know AX is zero. I'm then going to do some of the moments about A equals zero, and I'm going to find out that BY is equal to 11.7 kips. And then I'm going to do some of the forces in, in the Y equals to zero, and I'm going to find that AY is equal to 15.3 kips. And then I'm going to do some of the moments about another point. Let's do it about B, and it's going to check out because I already checked it. So AY I know is 15.3 kips and BY is 11.7 kips. And the only reason why I'm not doing the whole equilibrium equations is you know how to do it already and let's spend more time on the shear and bending moment diagrams. So I have three sections here. So I'm drawing the line down from three of them. I'm going to draw my horizontal line V. I'm putting kips, zero plus or minus. And then I'm going to draw a line down here for moments. And the units are going to be foot kip, zero plus or minus. And we're going to start in the middle because uh, I'm going to start with Jordan. I'm going to start with you, Jordan. Okay. So let's take a look at this shear and bend the shear diagram. So I have to figure out what my scale is going to be here, right? So let's see. We have a 15 kip, a 12 kip, a 10 kip, I mean, 11 kip. How much loading is in here, Jordan? How much loading is in the distributed load? Okay. Oh, and I should be pinning this, shouldn't I? Pin it. Can you see it bigger now? So Jordan, what's the load in this distributed load? 2.5 kips per feet. Right, so it's 2.5 kips per foot. And how much feet are we going over? Six. Six, so what's the total load? Uh, six times 2.5, which is 15. Right. And you guys, look at this. Think of it this way. It's 2.5 times 6. 2 times 6 is 12. And then what's half of 6? 3, so it's 15. Try to think of quicker ways to do the math. So we're going to be moving at 15. So I'm thinking, um, let's do, uh, how about 5? 10, 15, 20, 5, 10, 15, 20. Okay, so Jordan, what do I do at point A? That would be um, I don't think you were here on Tuesday, Jordan. Say it again. I was here for the first half on Tuesday. Okay, okay. I don't know if you watched the video, so you might want need to pass. I didn't hear what you said. I'll just pass. Okay. Um, Laura, what do I do? Um, you go up to 15.3. Great. 15.3. And then I'm going to stop there. Okay, Laura. Liam. Liam here? Yes. Okay, good. Liam, is anything going on between A and C? Yes. There's the distributed load, right? Yeah. And is the force going down or up? 
It's going down. So we know we need to draw it down. Based on what those summary sheets or the cheat sheets I show you, showed you, how is it going down? Linearly. Right, and is it, um, uh, am I going back down on A or am I doing a diagonal? A diagonal. Right, so we said it was 15, so that means it's going here, right? Yeah, the 0.3. Right, 0 0.3. Let's just shade it in. Okay, uh, Lise, are you here? Mackenzie? Marcine? Yeah. Okay, Marcine, so what happens when I hit point C? Um, you have to now incorporate the 12 kips load. Right, and what do I do? Uh, you're gonna go down, it's um, just going to be horizontal and go down uh, negative 12 from where you were. Okay, you mean vertical, right? Yeah, I meant, yeah, when you draw it, I meant when you draw it to the next point, it would be. Vertical. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to go down 12, so I'm going to 11.7, right? Yeah. Okay, and then from C to B, is anything happening? Yeah, we go up 11.7 and we trace right back to zero. Uh, I'm sorry, you're going faster than I'm going. So slow down a little. From C to B, is anything happening between C and B? Oh, no. No, so what do I do? Um, you draw a horizontal line. Great, thank you. And then what happens at B? Then it goes up 11.7 and goes to zero. Right, and it closes at zero, right? So we know it closes at zero. So we know that we checked our work. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now, now what's the next step? Uh, Maria, what's our next step now? We, we transferred all the loading information from the initial uh, free body diagram down to the shear diagram. And now what do we want to do? Now we go down to the moment. Um... Now we have to show the moment diagram. So how are we going to find the moment information? What do we need to look at here? The area of the underneath the shear diagrams. Right. So let's just call it one and two because there's only two sections. Mm -hmm. So notice when you calculate area one, it's a triangle and a rectangle, right? Mm -hmm. You guys. So it's one half base, which is six times height, which is 15, plus base, which is six, times height, which is 0 0.3. Or we could have used it, uh, did a trapezoid, right? This is the same as I could have also said an area of a trapezoid. So this I did the triangle, and then I did the rectangle, or I could have just done the area of a trapezoid, which would be 15.3 plus 0 0.3 over two times the distance, and we would get the same answer. And what do we get? I don't know. I got 46.8. Let's see if I got it both ways. Yeah, 46.8. Both of them came out to be 46.8. Okay, and then area two is base times height and the base is four and the height is 11.7. So that comes out to be 11.7 times, 11.7 times four is 46.8. Wow, how convenient, huh? I kind of did my check already. All right, so Maria, you're getting the hard question. Is this a positive area or positive? Well, so first of all, is the slope positive or negative? Negative. Okay, so the slope is negative. Is the area positive or negative? Positive. How about here? 
There's no slope, right? And is the area positive or negative? Negative. Negative. Okay, so <clears throat> I don't know. I, I'm curious from you guys, do you like just using the cheat sheet or you like to do the integration? I don't know. You guys want to tell me? Maybe put it in the uh, chat. I don't know if we're going to do integration formulas, but knowing the concept is probably useful because it's just summing up the area, right? Right. So it's the it's the area at each, like, I don't know, that's, slice. That's so correct. You could, yeah. So you could say the downward slope one has a bunch of positive area, then adds a little less, then adds a little less, then adds a little less. That's a way to see that it's going to be one of those curves rather okay. than having to memorize the chart. Great. Yeah. And you don't have, yeah, it's definitely. Did everybody get what Dave was explaining? That when you take the integration, the area is getting smaller and smaller. So is okay. that going to be a curve down? So is that going to be a curve down? Well, I, I'll look at my uh, cheat sheet. So if I have a negative slope and I have a positive area, it actually goes up. Oh, and I didn't make my scale. So I guess I'm going to have to make my scale now. Hang on a sec. Okay, but I don't think I, that graph should start at zero, right? It starts with a bunch of area. That's why I'm confused. Hang on a second. No, it starts at zero. It always starts at zero, it always ends at zero. What we have going on here is we have a rectangular area and we have a triangular area. The rectangular area with a positive, with a positive area would result in a slope like this. But the fact that we have this triangular area with a negative slope but a positive area, it's gonna go up like this. So it's definitely going up. Hang on, 20, 40, 20, 40. Does it always, the moment always has to start with a moment at zero, unless we have a concentrated moment here. So if this is 40, this is 46. It's gonna go like that. Oh, oh, cause it's distance zero. Oh, cause it's distance zero at the start for a moment, right? That's why it has to be zero at the start. Um, I just know it always starts at zero. I'm not really sure. I'm not, I'm not, I don't understand why you're confused. So I don't know what to say about that. And I think Definitely. the question you're asking is more of a calculus question, so I can't answer it anyway. Okay, I, I, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll think about it later. Okay, thanks. All right, and then the second, where are Marcine, Maria, Matthew? Matthew, you here? No. Okay, Myra? Miles. Okay, Maria, we're going back to you. We have a negative area here. So what is it going to look like? It's going to be a negative slope down to zero. Correct. Ah, uh, and this resultant must be continuous, no? Say it again. Let me, uh, let me look at, let's see your faces. Hang on a sec. Um, okay, Jason, what was the question? What's continuous? Um, I'm noting that the, uh, the line that describes the sum of the area of the shear must be continuous. So, we start out with, I think I know what your question is. We start out with a moment of zero, and then this is the change in moment that occurs from this point to this point. So here's my change of 46.8. Then this area right here tells me the change in moment that occurs. And because it's negative, it goes down on the line. For right now, I am just doing this graphically and soon I'll be doing it mathematically. How can I draw a line so straight without a ruler? I don't know, I just practice, I guess. Um, uh, well, I keep my hands steady. I know where I'm coming from and going to. 
I don't know. Um, but I'm just doing it graphically, but soon we're gonna do it mathematically. So you guys are gonna determine which one you prefer. So this is what's happening. So in terms of this problem, what is, Peter, are you here? Tim, what's the maximum shear the beam is gonna experience and what is the maximum moment the beam will experience? 15.3. Uh, Kips. kips. Yep. And on the moment, 46.8 foot kips, feet kips. Right. So in this case, we know that we would have to design this beam. We would have to select a beam that can handle this shear in this moment. Okay, you ready for me to do the math now? I'm gonna go back to this problem. Everybody could see it? Everybody ready? Actually, you know what I'll do is I'll, I'll fold it. I'm going to fold the page. And do it on the side. Okay, everybody ready? So when you do it mathematically, you're looking at the sections, each of the sections. Okay. Uh, Tony, Tony, you here? Victoria. No. Okay, Amani. Okay, how many sections do we have here? Um, four. Four, okay. So I'm gonna look at the first section, section one, and I'm gonna draw it. I'm gonna call the distance X because I'm anywhere in this distance X, which means I'm anywhere between one to 10 feet. And at the left end, I have 120 pounds. Am I drawing this too small, writing it too small? Just a little bit. Okay. Pretty cool. Now I want you to be able to see this too here. So section one is gonna be from zero to 10 feet. And at this point, I have 120 pounds. And this distance is X. Watch what I do for a minute. I'm gonna put the shear going down and I'll talk about my sign convention in the end, okay? So just believe me right now, this is the sign convention. What I'm doing is I'm cutting this beam anywhere. Everybody look up here, please. I'm cutting this beam anywhere here because I want to find out what the shear, what the shear is that it's experiencing any, anywhere here. So I'm calling it X. And at the place that I cut it, I'm, and I'm using C for cut, I'm putting a V going down in the moment. So I am not, you guys, showing the 240 pounds because, oh, uh, let's not use C because there's a C point here. Let's call it O. At somewhere, uh, yeah, at some point along here, I could cut it anywhere I want, but I'm not. I'm cutting it right before C. So this is the free body diagram I have for that section. There's 120 pounds going down. V, the sign convention is to draw it going down. We have to do this, the sign convention I'm giving you to get the drawings we have. So I am going to do sum of the forces in the Y equal negative 120 minus V equals zero and the shear is gonna be 120. That means anywhere in this section, the shear is 120. And then I'm doing some of the moments about where I cut it and it's 120 times X positive plus the moment there is zero and the moment is equal to negative 120 X. So now using my highlighter. Joanne, 
I, I left out a negative I'm... sign. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so now I did a uh, uh, I did a free body diagram for this first section here. I put the cut at any point in here where x is zero. So now the, it means what I'm what I'm learning from the sum of the forces and the y is the shear is always a negative one twenty, and I could color it in. The moment diagram in that section is negative 120 X. So when X is equal to zero at this end, the moment is zero. And when X is 10 feet, the moment is 1200 negative. And that makes my diagram go from here to here. And then I could color it in. So far, so good. Okay. Let's do section two. At section two, now I'm cutting it here. So let's draw the free body diagram of that. Well, at the A, it's kind of like doing a um, method of sections on trusses. We have to look at the whole left side. So I have the 120 here. This is 10 inches actually, not feet. Here I have 240 pounds, this is X, and now I have my new shear and my new moment. So I am, I drew a free body diagram that is gonna be, allow me to calculate the shear and the moment anywhere within the section. Sum of the forces in the Y equal negative 120 plus 240 minus V equals zero and V equals 120. Is your end Some of the up? moments, what? Can you move it up? Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Some of the moments about that cut again um, is 120 times 10 plus X positive, 240 times X negative plus moment equals zero. So that's 20, 1200 plus 1200. Here's my moment. Did I do the math right? So 120, 12, 1200 plus 120X minus 240X. I moved the moment over to the other side, but that was kind of foolish. I should have just kept it on that side. So now I'm moving this over and these over. So this is gonna result in, yep, this is right. So now for the shear diagram, I see that between this section two, which is 10 feet, 10 inches rather, 10 inches to 25 inches in this section, V is 120. So it's 120 and then I could color it in. The moment, notice it has an X in it, right? So it's gonna be a diagonal. So when X, X is zero, remember X is only the distance between here and here in that section. When X is zero, the moment is negative 1200, which checks out because it's already negative 1200. When X is 25, the moment turns out to be 120 times 25 minus 1200. turns out to be 1800. And sure enough, at zero, it's 1200. At the, the distance of 25 feet, it's 1800. And this is linear because we have an X in here. It's a linear equation. How's everyone doing? Do you understand the concept? Jason, no, Lavoie. 
what you're doing is remember method of sections, right? We had a truss. We had a truss and we wanted to find out this. So we broke the whole left side to find out what this force is, this force is, and this force is. We were trying to find the loading that goes along it axial, whether it was tension or compression. We're doing the same exact thing now. We're taking the whole beam and we're cutting it and looking at only the left side and determining what the shear and the bending moment is for each. We're doing the same exact thing, but in a truss, the load we were looking for was the load, the tension or compression that's axially transmitted through here because these were two force members. This beam is not a two force member. So when we cut it, we're actually finding the shear and the moment at that point, the shear and the moment. So when I looked at the first section, I said, okay, for that distance of X, I draw the shear and the moment. You may not know why I'm drawing V down and why am I drawing V negative and moment positive? You don't know yet and I haven't told you yet and I'm not gonna tell you until later. But so you're putting the shear because you want to know exactly what the shear is at any point in here. At any point in here, I want to know the shear. So it's a function of all the forces on the left. Just like when you did method of sections on the truss, the values, the forces in these members were a function of all the forces that were on it on the left. Yeah, but except with the truss, it doesn't matter where you cut it in relation to the members, this does. Correct, correct, good point. All right, did everybody hear that? It doesn't matter if we cut it here, the truss or here or here or here, it doesn't matter because the type of loading that is in a truss, a truss member that's a two force member is axially going through here. But in this case, in this case, where I am along here totally could matter. Especially that's why it's, it's changing. Just, that's why it's changing. There's a variable. There's a variable X, and that will change right. as you cut it I'm in different keep, places. I'm keeping X in here because the shear could change. It just works out that in this problem, when there are only concentrated loads, the shear doesn't change within the section. So we're always going to get a number like V is equal to something, V is equal to something. But if we had a distributed load, the V is going to change as I'm in that section. In the truss, I'm finding the load that's along the member. In the beam, I'm finding the load that's perpendicular to the member at different points and the moment that is at any point. Okay. So if we did that with a distributed load, we would get the shear having an X in it. It would have like a linear, like a line. And then the bending moment would have a square in it. It would have an X square, which is what gives you the curves. Is that it? Correct. Okay. And we're going to do, we'll do that. So um, I don't know if you want me to keep going. Why don't you, why don't you do it? All right. You guys do it. Section three. So section three is... Um, what is it, 35 feet? 35 feet to 55 feet. That's section three. So maybe you wanna label it. We already did one, two, three, or four here. So we could just call it, you know, section one, section two, section three, section four. So we have to draw every, so for section three, we're cutting it somewhere. And this distance that we're cutting it is X. So I have to draw the whole thing. I have the 12, uh, the 120 here at A. At C, I have the 240. At D, I have the 300. This is 10 inches, 25 oh, inches. 
This is 25 inches. This is going to be X. This is where I'm cutting it. I put my V down and my moment like this. So now do it. Sum of the forces in the Y equal negative, 12, uh, negative 120 plus 240 minus 300 minus V equals zero. V turns out to be 120, 180, negative 180. And I should write units, but this is kind of scrap in a way, so I'm not gonna write units. And then some of the moments about the cut, it's 120 times 35 plus X positive, 240 times 25 plus X negative, and then 300 plus 300 times X plus M equals zero. So that's 120 times 35 plus 120 X minus 240 times 25 minus 240 times X plus 300 X plus M equal. You could see why I don't want to do this. I'd rather just draw it, but we're figuring out what it is. So 120 times 35 equals minus 240 times 25 equals, it's negative 1800. And then 120 minus 240 plus 300 equals um, 180 x equals m, but that means the sign's changing. Let me just check it. Yeah. Okay, so when x is zero, m is equal to 1800. And when x is, what's the distance x here? 20? Yeah. When x is 20, M turns out to be 180 times 20 minus plus 1800 equals negative 1800. Should I wait for you guys? Are you still doing that math? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still catching up. There's two concepts I need to uh, talk to you about besides showing you the math, but um, I mean, why don't I post this, you guys? I'll post the math so you can see how it's done. Okay, I'll make sure I post this. Can you show what you got again for that one? Can you move it? Yeah, um, I got, oh, you mean the diagram? No, 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 right there, right there, that's fine. 1800 minus 180X. I didn't check it yet. So let's see, I got a negative 180 for, yep, I got the same thing. And then for X, the zero is, I got 18 and this is negative 18, yep. Joanne, for the moment calculation, um, how do you, what do you do with the shear moment that you drew on the, on your free body diagram? Do you do oh. When I'm calculating the moment about point O where the cut is, the mm -hmm. shear is at that point, so it drops out. Because when I'm trying to find the sum of the moments at this point, the shear creates no moment. Oh, so that's where we, we don't find the moment from A, we find it from the moment. No, I'm putting a subscript of zero. And I'm putting a zero right where we're cutting. Okay? Okay. So I'm to... always finding the moment about this point. Okay. And you guys remember that a force that goes through the point I'm trying to find the moment about creates no moment. 
But if there's a concentrated moment on here, I have to add it in. Okay. So I, I think I would rather go on from this right now. So I, I showed you an example and there are tons of math examples in the book if you wanna do it that way. But you see that when I'd solve for the moment, I'm getting something linear because I was given concentrated loads. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this, the sign convention. Okay, is everybody with me? Again, I'll post the math. Okay, so take a look at this, um, our shear and bending moment diagram. If the force goes down, this is kind of a complicated topic but I want to explain why this is the sign convention. When the force goes down, the shear goes down, right? So the shear diagram is the same direction as the force. The only way to get the shear to be going the same direction as the force is to start with the shear going in the opposite direction. So if I have a force here of 150 pounds and I want my diagram in shear to go down 150, I have to have the shear going down because here, some of the forces in the Y equal negative 150 minus V equals zero, V equals 150. Notice by having a sign convention, a V drawn negative at the cut results in V having the same exact sign as the force that it has. I think it's wonderful that when you go down 120 up here, you go down 120 here. When you go up 240, you go up 240. When you go down 300, you go down 300. The reason this is the case is because we are choosing at the point of the cut, the sign convention of V going down. If we had V going up, this whole shear diagram would be flipped. And when we go down, we go up instead. I don't know if you're following on that. So basically, I guess the thing is, it's complicated and you have to think about it a little, but I, we want to draw a shear diagram that has the shears going in the same direction. So we have to have the sign convention with the V at the cut going down. Then when we have a negative V, we want our moment to go down. When we have a positive area, we want our moment to go up when we have a negative area this way. We have to have the sign convention this way. So the sign convention of V drawn down and in the negative and the moment drawn positive allows us to get pictures like this. If the sign convention for V or M were swapped, the drawings would be opposite of these. Do you need to completely understand that? No. We just know we want the diagrams to look like this. And remember that you have to have V going down and M going this way. And it has to do with sign doing the signs. If V goes down and I do the sum of the forces in the Y, I have a negative 150 minus V and V turns out to have the same sign as this force. So that's why we have our V with the sign convention going down. 
If the initial force was going up, so if there's, then the shear would be opposite. So let's see, if we had, if we had 120 pounds going up, we still, the sign convention has shear going that way. Some of the forces in the Y equal 120 minus V equals zero, V is equal to 120. You want the V to be drawn negative so that you have the sign that's given in the, draw, in the original force. Okay, so now spend more time thinking about that. Going back to this diagram. So if I did a cut, I want to do another cut. Let's say we want section one. Section one goes from zero to six feet. I have 15.3 kips going up. And I have 2.5 kips per foot and the foot, the distance is X. I put my V here going down. I put my moment going positive. I do some of the forces in the Y equals zero, uh, equals zero is 15.3 minus 2.5 X minus V equals zero. V equals 15.3 minus 2.5 X. So when X is zero, V is 15.3. When X is equal to six feet, V is 15.3 minus 2.5 times six, which turns out to be zero. So it goes from 15.3 down to, actually it comes out to be 0.3, sorry goes down to 0.3. How about the sum of the moments at the cut? Put it 0 0.0. It's 15.3 X negative, 2.5 X times the distance, which is X over two, positive plus moment equals zero. Let me do this again. I'm doing the sum of the moments about 0.0. It would be 15.3 times X plus the force here, 2.5. The force is 2.5 times X, right? A distributed load is 2.5 times X and it's halfway over on the X. So it's 2.5 X times X half of X plus M equals zero. Wait, I'm a little bit confused on why it's 15.3 times X. If we're doing the moment from the point where V is, wouldn't it always just be six? Because isn't 15.3? Um, no, because this is X. I could be cutting it here, 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 anywhere. X represents the distance that I'm going from A. It's only when, when I do substitute X in six for X, then I could find the shear at this point, point three. Basically you're not cutting it at C. Like that's I'm the not whole cutting point, it at right? C, I'm cutting, cutting it anywhere yeah. before C. You're creating a formula to find what the value would be at any arbitrary point. I'm creating a formula by doing some of the forces in the Y and some of the moments about the cut point. I am finding the formula for the shear, the value of the shear in the moment at any point between zero and six. So er early on, maybe I misunderstood it. You were saying the start and end of these diagrams has to be zero. It always starts at zero, goes up and down and gets back to zero. But, Correct. But you just, showed that it doesn't, right? You said X no, equals zero, there's a value. 
Right, but it's only at the beginning of the shear diagram and the end of the shear diagram that has to close at zero. But anywhere in here, the diagram could have any value of shear. So I am looking at, I'm trying to find just this section. What is the shear and the bending moment at any point here? So I cut it. The sum of the, some of the forces are gonna be equal to zero, but the shear isn't zero except at the ends. It, it's not, right? At, at, at zero, right? At the left end, it's 15. Oh, I see what you're saying now. It starts at zero and it goes up to 15. I, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, hmm. yeah. I thought you meant over here. Yeah, it goes up, yeah. Yes, you're drawing it up to 15. It starts here and it ends here. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll ask about that later. Okay. okay. I mean, but like mathematically, it's not really like it's the ends of the graph. You wouldn't really say are zero mathematically. Okay. Just remember that it's got to close to zero when you get to the end. I don't know how you want to express yeah, it. Yeah, I agree that the moment one must be value zero at the start and value zero at the end. Now, this case the where there. Thing. Um, there's a case true? it's not true there's a case uh and we're getting to that that's the second thing i have to show you but i feel like this math stuff is just i don't know if you could draw the diagram without doing all these cuts and the cuts are just confusing you and you're bound to make a negative error i just wouldn't do it i would do the math if you want to check it I would just draw the diagrams, but let me just finish this. So at the, so this is moment is equal to, so it's gonna be 15.3 X minus 2.5 X squared over two. So the moment is 15.3 minus 1.25 X squared. When X is zero, the moment is 15.3. Okay, I made a mis math mistake. You forgot the X on the 15.3. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. No problem. Oh, zero. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay. Um, and when X is six feet, the moment is times 36 equals minus plus 15.3 times six, 46.8. So then I got this curve now. Okay, you have four homework problems. Do it graphically, check it with the math, okay? You could do this, it might be a little confusing, but you could do it. But I need to go on to another problem to show you something important. I'm gonna um, draw one here. Uh, can you see my paper?
Can you read my drawing? Is it too small? So the beam okay. goes from A to B. The distance is from the distance from A to C is 0.6. Distance from C to D is 0.9. D to E is 1.5, and E to B is 0.2. There's a 40 kilonewton force going down, a 32 kilonewton here, 16 kilonewton here. A has a pin, so we have to calculate AY and AX. And B has a roller, so we have a BY. And notice there's a concentrated moment at point D of 15 kilonewton meter. So sum of the forces in the X equal AX equals zero. Got that one. Sum of the moments about A. Did everybody see the um, the loading? So there's an AY, there's a 40 kilonewtons, a 32 kilonewtons, a 16 kilonewtons, a BY, and then there's a concentrated moment at point D that's 15 kilonewton meters. Sum of moments about A, 40 times 0 0.6, negative, 32 times 1.5, negative, 16 times 3, negative, BY times 3.2, positive, plus 15 equals zero. You guys, this is really important. This textbook does not have a lot of problems in it with concentrated moments. Whenever there is a concentrated moment, you have to add it into the moment equation, no matter where you're trying to find your moment. Okay. How does that show up in the moment diagram? You'll see it in a little bit, but you could think about it. That's why we're doing this problem. Think about how a concentrated force shows up in the force diagram. So how does a concentrated moment show up in a moment diagram? And a concentrated moment exists specifically like if you throw at a that point. Yep, like you're putting gotcha. a screwdriver right in that point. Did anybody get BY yet? Yes, I got that, but is it positive? Okay, you got 32.8. Okay, so let's see if it's positive or negative. 24. Positive. Great. Thank you, Laura. Mm -hmm. All right, some of the forces in the Y equal A, Y, minus 40, minus 32, minus 16, plus 32.8 equals zero. AY equals zero. 
55.2. The forces have to go up anyway. Some of the moments about, let's do some of the moments about B. Well, I'm just gonna do a check because, Laura, did you get 55.2? Yes. Anybody else get the same answers as me? Yes. Who's the yes? Amani. Amani? Okay. Okay, they're fine. Can I right. write those in as checks on my on my homework? Can I just write Tim? Tim got Tim it. Tim checked it. Yeah, right. yeah. I got 55 too as well. I think we're okay. okay. All right. Tim All right. checked Dave. Okay, so I, I did blow it a little bit. What I should have done is drew all my lines first, right? So all my calculations would have been on the left. But now what I'm doing is just draw them down. I'll do them at the bottom. Your, your concentrated moment there, 15 kilonewtons, yes. was just added in. It doesn't matter where it is. It just gets added in because it's, it's, like, it's like a couple. A couple gets added in anywhere. Two forces, same magnitude, opposite direction. No matter, if I had a ruler, Jason, if I had a ruler and I had several holes in here and I took a screwdriver and I stuck it in a hole here or here or here or here, the whole thing would be spinning that same amount. So graphically speaking, it will raise the whole moment by that amount or lower. Raise or decrease. Hang on. Okay, there's another little uh, issue that we're dealing with. All right, so I'm drawing my shear diagram and my moment diagram. V kilonewtons, zero plus minus moment foot kilonewton, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> kilonewton meter, zero plus minus. So let's see, our shears are 40s. I'll do um, 20, 40, zero, 20, 40, 20, 40, 40, 40, 40. Okay, who wants to do the shear diagram? Me, 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 come on, somebody. Me, 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 who? Who? Maria, start okay. at zero. What happens? Um, uh, we go up by 55.2 kilonewtons. Right. Okay, then what happens from point A to C? Nothing. It Nothing. Just, then what happens? Then it drops by 40 kilonewtons, so you go down to... Um, is that 15.2? Yep. Then what happens? Nothing. Then? Then it drops again by 32 kilonewtons. Okay. I don't know what that is. But negative 15 point, ne negative 15? I think it's 17, isn't it? I don't know. 32 minus 15.2. 16.8. And then what happens? And then there's a moment. Does that have anything to do with it? No. Nope, because this is a shear diagram. Okay, uh, then it goes over and then it goes down by 16 kilonewtons. Then it goes down 16. So that's 16 plus 16 is 32.8. Mm -hmm. Then it goes over and then it goes up by 32.8. Great, and it closes. Why would anybody want to do all those cuts and math if you could just get it like this? But you could check it with the math. Okay, so um, what's the maximum shear, Maria? 55.2. Right, so that's the, the load that I have to make sure that my beam can withstand. Okay, who wants to do the, the uh, moment? Well, should we find the areas first? One, two, three, four. So area one, area two, area three, area four. Area one, 55.2 
times 0 0.6. Area two, 15.2 times 0 0.9. 16.8 times 1.5, um, 32.8 times 0 0.2. I probably wouldn't do any rounding because you're gonna just get errors in the diagram. It won't close. So just bring it out. I'm bringing it out to two decimal places. Marcine, you wanna do it? I'm um, sure. Okay. All right, so you see the areas here. Can you read them? Yeah, I can read them. Okay, so this is the areas of the four sections. So I start at zero and what happened? Oh yeah, let's put positive area, positive area, negative area, negative area. So what happens first? Um, you're gonna go up to the first, which is 33.1, or you should make a scale first. Yeah, let's do, um, should we do 2040 again? Yeah. Because I don't have a lot of room on my paper. Okay, so what is it going up to? To 33.12. 33.12. Does everybody realize you don't want to round? Because you're not going to close at zero at the end. You may not. So keep it. Okay, Marcin, what do we do next? Uh, now we want to go up um, another 13.68. So that's 46.8. And let's just keep it with a, a two decimal places just so that we're consistent and nobody knows we, and we know we round it. Okay, so now here we come into the issue. I'll wait for everybody to be ready. When we're interested in doing the shear diagram, we look at the load diagram. Once we draw the shear diagram, we don't have to look at the load diagram to do the moment, except if there's a concentrated moment. So what I always do on my paper is if I see there's a concentrated moment, I put a little tick mark here at the spot. So I remember that I have to do something special here. Okay, because otherwise when I'm doing my moment diagram, I'm just gonna use my shear diagram. And what's gonna happen? It's not gonna close. Think about it. If this is a negative area of 25, it's gonna to go to here. So 25.2 is gonna give me 21.6. And then I have a negative area of six and I go down six and now I'm gonna be at 15. You're gonna see it's not gonna close. So you could wait till you don't close and then say, oh, something happened or what I always do is when I see a problem that has a concentrated moment, I put a little marker here to remind myself. So I get up to here, I get up to here and I say, oh, okay, there's a concentrated moment. When there is a concentrated load, there's a direct vertical change in my shear diagram, right? When there's a concentrated moment, I know Isaac's been chomping at the bit to say this. When there's a concentrated moment, what do you expect to happen here, Isaac? I expect the. Uh, Let me well, just say Dave it again. Dave and I were arguing. Dave and I were arguing I, I, about okay, it. Okay, hang on a sure. second. So when I just I don't want a positive or a negative answer right now. When there's a concentrated force you have a vertical change in the shear diagram. When you have a concentrated moment, what do you expect to see here? Uh, Dave wins change. this one. An instant change at that. A vertical spot. change, an instant change. So now the question is, do we, is it positive or negative? So let's look. With the shear, you go up, shear goes up. Go down, you go down. The reason for that, I know class should end, right? The reason for that is because, for all my papers,
the reason that when you have a force going up, your shear goes up is because you chose the sign convention of a negative V. But what sign convention did we choose for the moment? A positive moment, which means the direct change of this um, concentrated moment is not gonna be in the same direction. It's gonna be in the opposite direction. So is, so is this, Isaac, is this a positive or negative moment? Can you see it? I think we're all struggling did, with the did, positive. Did you say we're switching it now? Negative, right? Yes. Because yeah. it has to be negative because otherwise you will not get back to zero. Yeah, but that's not really the, that's not the answer why. No, I know we that, have to shift, just saying. But, but Tim's making some sense. We noticed we ended too high, so we must subtract it. But the reason why, it, okay. I don't know, it, I know it's hard to understand. So we've just you chosen, guys, we wait, basically, wait, we have to realize Isaac. we switched convention. <laughs> When you do some of the forces in the Y, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, in the end, you subtract V because V is negative. And in the end, V turns out to be the sign, the cumulative sign of this. Because we have a negative sign convention for the V, the V turns out to be the exact same sign of all the forces. The convention, though, has a positive moment. So when you do some of the moments, da, 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 you're going to say plus m equals zero. And then when you move m here, m is negative, which means the positive m is going to have a negative of whatever you get here. I don't know how else to say it. And maybe watching the video again will be like, oh, now I get it. If you don't want to get it, you don't have to, you just have to know. You go up in force, you go up in shear. You have a positive moment, you do a negative moment. We go down 15. So if we go down 15, we get to here, 31.8. So there's a direct change and it's a down. It's the opposite of the, mo of the moment. Okay, Marcin, you want to finish? What happens in section in section three? Uh, it's a negative area, so we go down twenty five point two. Right, so we go down twenty five point two, and what do we come out to be? Six uh, point five six. Five six. And then um, the last area. Is that right? I got 6.6, .6, but I know it's supposed to be 6.56 because I right, think so, it's be a rounding error somewhere. Okay, so let's find it. Let me just check my math. I bet the error is here. 55.2 minus 40 minus 32 minus 16. No, that's right. Forty six point eight minus fifteen is thirty one point eight minus twenty five point two. I don't know where the error is, but there's some error here. Um, okay, and what's the last part? Then we just go down. Closes at zero. 0 yeah. Okay, and what's the maximum moment? It's the forty six point eight. Right. So there's, there's a math error here. I just don't know what it is, where it is. There's a 0.4 off. All right. So now 
I know I'm going over. I want to hear from you in terms of, are you comfortable with drawing the diagrams? Thumbs up, come on, give me your, turn on your pictures. Give me a thumbs up or something. Raise your hand or something. I think I'm comfortable following the steps, but I have a lot of like reasons why questions, but that can be okay. office hours. Okay. This topic of shear and bending moment diagrams will be covered in strength of materials as well. Some people don't even teach it in statics, but I like to teach it in statics, include it, and you'll see it again. And if you wind up not taking strength of materials at Cabrillo and you transfer the four-year school and take it there, you're gonna be among students who don't know how to do it. Okay. Um, so I think, I think you, the only trick you have to remember with drawing it is that if there's a concentrated moment, you have to draw the moment, a vertical moment, and it's gonna be opposite the direction of the moment that's applied, okay? That's the only trick with the, the um, drawing. Um, I think the other thing that was confusing was actually breaking all the thing into sections to check, okay? All right. Um, lastly, then, um, let me, uh, let me now host. Okay, I'm making me the host laptop my laptop the host because I want to go to the overview so I'm going back to the module and I'm opening up the overview Okay. In this module, you learn how to solve for the shear and bending moments along all points on a beam and draw the shear and bending moment diagram. Okay, you will learn how to use the following steps. So the first step, I need you to clarify whether you think this sounds good or not. Solve for the reactions of the supports. Then you draw the beam and the loading on the beam. And then you draw lines down, maybe I should say vertical, hang on. I think down makes it pretty clear. All right, well, draw vertical lines down from the beam for the shear and bending moment diagrams. Then draw a horizontal line for both the shear and the bending moment. Put B, V, the units, plot zero, plus and negative, and the scale of the shear and bending diagram to the right of the line. Wait, put. Maybe the vertical lines like clarify that it's from the of the forces to um, acting on the diagram. Like, Do you want me to change the wording? Is it okay now? Draw vertical lines down from the loaded beam. How's that? I mean, Maria. Um. Sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Draw a horizontal lines for the shear and bending moment diagrams. Put V units zero and plus to the left of the line and put the scale of the V diagram to the right of the horizontal line. Watch lecture video for details. Do the same for the M, the moment diagram. Put M units blank and the scale. Okay, five, using the loading shown on the beam, draw the shear diagram to scale and show the shear values on the diagram. As the loading goes up or down, the shear diagram is drawn up or down. A concentrated load results in a vertical change on the shear diagram. A distributed load down results in a slope line down on the shear diagram. Report the maximum shear. 
Then calculate the area of each section of the shear diagram. This represents the change in the moment diagram. Follow the shear and bending moment summary of the shapes file posted in the module. Report the maximum um, uh, moment. I think I want to add in here. Um, if there is a concentrated moment uh, on the beam, you will need to show a vertical change in the moment moment diagram at that point. If the moment applied is positive, the moment diagram shows a negative change. Negative You understand what I do when I have these parentheses, right? Okay, and then report the Vmax. Any uh, edits to this? Are you guys good? Okay, so back now to the module. So you have the overview, you have the template, you have the shapes. You could look at the ones on the steel diagram. Here was Tuesday's class problem. I'll put Thursdays in right now. Um, <clears throat> I made a video just in case I was gonna be late for class, but I didn't publish it now. So I took it off, so don't worry about it. And then you have a homework. Okay. And then tomorrow in lab, you're gonna be practicing shear and bending moment diagrams. And if you want Rob to go over the math, have him go over the math with you. I really like that both Rob and I are teaching because he does teach things a little differently than I do or has a different approach on some things. And I think it's really helpful for different learners to learn from two different teachers. And then remember, you could always get help from Karen as well and Andrew after lab class and even Carl. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing and see, do you guys have any questions? Okay, so um, I will be in office hours today and I'll be in office hours tomorrow. Okay. Thanks so much, you're the best. Thanks. Going on our time, making it, making it work. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good one, Joanne. Thanks, okay, you too. Okay, bye. I'm um, Joanne. I do have one question related oh, okay, to the wait, interview. Yeah, yeah. Jason, stay on. If you have questions, I'm, I'm okay. I'm available. Cool, cool, cool. So, um, I, uh, yesterday I read the introduction again. So you said when you have a grade on the interview, the second interview higher than the first one, you'll get replaced. Um, what if I did like terrible on the second one? I did like awesome on the first one. You're so gonna have, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna replace the second one with the first one, but mm -hmm. you're gonna have to prove to me that you know the material. So we're gonna have another interview and I'll have some other opportunities. I just haven't awesome. figured out what they all are yet. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Okay. All right. See ya. Marcin, do you have a question? No. Jack?
Sorry about that, Joanne. I had left just. Oh, that's fine. I'm trying to figure out whether I actually recorded. Yeah, it looks like I, I recorded. Yeah, it said you were recording most of every time I okay. looked up recording. Okay, thanks. So I have to shut it off now. Oh, um, Joanne, I did have a quick question about. Um... Yeah, do you want me to want me to um, stop recording first? Oh, here oh. I see it up on the screen.